Hello, how are you doing? My name is Skinner. You probably know that already. <laughs> Listen, uh, I really appreciate you showing up to my Patreon situation that I have going here. I'm going to be doing a lot. Um, I'm a very uh, obnoxious, extroverted person at times, and so this will be a good outlet for that for me. And I can uh, cultivate a cool community where uh, you guys can ask questions, learn stuff, and maybe even connect with each other along the way. Um, I'm going to be, of course, figuring out what would be like the best way for me to share information or to create a system that feels equitable and really interesting to you. And, uh, I mean, not equitable, I guess, um, a good, you know, you're getting a good deal from me. Um, I'm doing a million different things, so there's never going to be like a loss of what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> I mean, I had a day today where I got to hang out with Phil Tippett most of the day, and I could talk about that forever, and maybe maybe I will, um, because I think that even though my life is full of uh, interesting experiential surprises that the lessons for me are a lot deeper and I, I, I use them and integrate them into my life. And, um, so we'll, we'll get around to a lot of that stuff. Uh, I want to be accessible to a lot of questions. I'm going to do some, a lot of zoom, um, like some live zoom stuff where people can ask questions about art, about life, uh, any questions about my experiences. Um, I really, I really, really want to, um, use my time and energy to make your lives as creatives um, easier. I've learned a lot of lessons. Uh, <laughs> I have a lot of insights about stuff and I have a lot of strong beliefs about institutions, companies, and industries. So, you know, I'll be available for a lot of that stuff. And um, I'll just kind of keep you guys up to date on every little single thing that I'm doing. And um, I just think that it's going to grow, it's going to change, and it's going to be sometimes me just talking to artists and about things that sometimes maybe I'll have like a very pressing, uh, you know, thought or it's some, I'll be on some, you know, jag about, you know, a, a mental health or, or I don't know, like cultural stuff or th things that I think that are interesting or things that I don't think are good or things that I love about um, art, music, films, comics, you know, and uh, I just, yeah, so that that's it. I don't know. I don't want to go on for too long because uh, I'm going to do some inking tonight. Uh, that's one thing that I want to do is establish is like uh, some nights where I'm just doing inking um, illustrating and painting. I'm going to do some airbrushing. I'll show you guys how, you know, how I do, uh, uh, painting beginning to end and it won't take long. I'll do like small versions so that you can see in, in a kind of encapsulated way, what it is to, you know, um, do like a little fun airbrush ghoul head. And then you could take those, those ideas and those, uh, those skills and, and integrate them into your life or your practice in some way. Uh, I just, I don't know. I just, uh, <laughs> when I was writing down the list of things that I wanted to do and talk about, it was just this long, long, giant, uh, sort of impossible <laughs> to accomplish list of things. But I do believe I will get to a lot of them. And I'll be interviewing uh, some really interesting creative people, uh, about just art and life and stories and funny shit. Um, that's one thing. My main, main goal is besides being helpful and entertaining is to be fun and funny because everything is, is a devastating existential nightmare to me. And I like to laugh more than I like crying. So we're going to uh, work that out. And um, I really... Uh, you know, if there's anything you guys kind of like want to see, like I would love, I'd love suggestions and ideas. Um, you know, I just think that it's, 
the sky's the limit as far as the way that we can connect and, and communicate. Uh, doing the Kickstarter was a very interesting uh, experience for me when I did the sk first skin crawl comic this last, I don't know, November, October, November. Um, it was a little bit like a Patreon. And the thing that I noticed was that I was just feeling, I don't know, kind of eternally grateful every single day about the uh, patronage, but more like the partnership of stuff. You know, it's in, in a way, the people that contributed to my Kickstarter were like my publishers. And, you know, it just feels better to me to be able to establish a strong uh, connection and uh, with of appreciation and gratitude and um, I don't know, like goodwill with people of the public than to have a, a, a weird middleman person or I don't know, like an old outdated idea of something that artists are supposed to do, say that uh, it is a, is a middleman, you know, uh, some kind of industry or institution, uh, galleries or publishers or company companies, you know, it's like, as an artist now in this day and age, and I'm going to definitely talk about that, um, is eliminating people that are cutting into your energy and your, your money, your time and your resources. And there's a lot of them out there because <laughs> artists have been getting mind pimped since day one. And I'm tired of getting mind pimped. I don't know about y'all. So, this is my intro message. Of course, I don't want to go on for too long. I could just go on and on. But um, I'm going to do some inking tonight. I'm about to do, uh, do about an hour. And I'm wondering uh, and uh, you know, about formats for, for the Patreon. So I'm thinking I can do an interview or talk to somebody for an hour and then do an hour of inking every week. I don't know if that's sustainable. I'm not sure, but I'm really, really interested in putting energy into this and sustaining it in a, in a mindful manner. So uh, with all that said, uh, I'm going to actually turn on the, the lights, the less spooky lights, <laughs> so you can see the stuff that I'm working on. And uh, I will do some talking about the tools I'm using and the things that I'm doing. But for the most part, uh, I'm just going to be doing some inking so that you can kind of see in an ASMR style uh, situation, something, uh, a demonic Bob Ross situation is what I'm looking to, to lay on you. All right. And uh, I'm working on issue two of Skin Crawl. Uh, it is ultra ambitious. <laughs> I was overwhelmed with the first one, which was 64 pages. Um, but now I'm doing over 80 pages, <laughs> over 80 pages for this next one. And it's, it's really coming along. It's getting closer and closer. I already have stories that are being colored by incredible, just absolutely incredible, uh, colorists for, you know, like wild storm productions, DC Marvel that are just amazing, but they're doing my weird shit. So it's, it's kind of nice. And, um, uh, skin crawls are a really cool way for me to pay a lot of my friends and people that I love anyway. So it's a nice endeavor for me and it makes me feel good. So I'm going to uh, turn these lights on and start uh, doing the inking. And then, you know, you're going to, you know, hopefully you'll love it. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe. You don't have to stop. We'll just. I know we're not stopping. Oh, this is producer Mark, by the way. <laughs> this is producer Mark. I, I, wait, we're doing lights now, right? Yeah, we're turning lights on now. Right. Mark is so. This is my friend. My friend Mark. You probably he's wearing a mask because he's allergic to cats. Also, he's allergic to COVID. <laughs> but here, come come over, take a and look inside the. What? There he is. <laughs> look at him. He's doing a meta situation. Here. There's Mark. Mark the shark. That's the guy I did the rap about, by the way. So here's the other camera angle. Um, I'm not going to work on this giant thing tonight. Uh, I will, but it's almost done, but I will be working on another page. I'm going to show you, but I, I wanted to kind of just show you guys this sort of splash page scene from issue two of skin crawl magazine. And it is, uh, 
a cosmic situation. The story that I'm doing is called The Game of the Gods. Cody Goodfellow helped me with the script. But essentially, it was a uh, – it's a fictional – a historical fictional account of something that I heard on Dan Carlin's hardcore history about uh, World War II. There, uh, in Russia, there was a guy that would sing at night in the Russian military army, and it was the only thing that was um, keeping both sides of the military from, you know, feeling super dreadful as this guy singing. Anyway, um, it's an anti-war fable that I've I worked I've been working on, but this is uh. So here, here's a uh, introduction section from Skin Crawl Issue 2 that I've just been kind of like gradually working on here and there. Um, but uh, so it's a lot of this, it's a lot of rancidness. <laughs> As you can see, one of the characters is a rancid little swamp man. Look at that hand, man. So anyway, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to... What should I do? Should I work on, I can work on this gross foot, which would be kind of cool. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll do some inking on this face or maybe I'll just, you know what? I'm just going to ink on this so that you can kind of see some larger strokes. And if I need to change, I will change to the other one. Okay. The paint, the, the inking paint that I like to use is called Royal Talons Drawing Ink. This is the most opaque, absolutely incredible stuff. I love it very much. Royal Talons. The, the guy that owns the company is really cool, super ethical, very, very interested in making the best, uh, the best art supplies in the old Dutch style. So, you know, I love him a lot. Um, but to start working on this what i'm going to be using is an isabi liner one okay isabi liner one six two two three i don't know if this is from paris or something anyways as you can tell i'm a slob and i get paint all over everything so but uh so i got my royal talons going So I'm going to just start going in on this. So what I'll probably do to initiate some comfort with my brush, because it, sometimes it takes a little while to get into like kind of a flow, is I'm going to mess around in the black area, the areas that are supposed to be solid black so that I know that I'm not messing up. Um, this brush is a little bit burnt out though. Let me see. Uh, anyway, so in my iPad, there is a program called Procreate. And in that program, I lay out my pages, my comic pages, uh, based on breakdowns and storyboards and stuff like that. Can you see that? Is that going? All right. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I have them pr the pages printed out at the size that like a little bit bigger than the way the size that they're going to be printed at. Cause this is pretty big. It's like 14 by 17. And, uh, I, so I print them out this size after I do the penciling digitally in procreate. And then I essentially just use the, the pencils as a guideline. And then I just start inking on top of it. So it's a digital pencil. Yeah, digital pencils. <laughs> so I have them uh, printed out at, in blue, kind of like light blue ink so that it's it can be taken out in Photoshop later. But uh, as you can see, having a nice liner brush um, and really good ink can make your life a lot easier with this. Like, you know. Trying to get this this hair looking ratty. I'm also like not entirely totally comfortable with uh, doing this while I'm kind of you know teaching people, so it's gonna maybe take me a little bit before I before I get like more natural with it. 
Um, so in this story, there's the, uh, the creatures who are sort of more natural. They're more on the side of nature. They're these sort of reptilian dudes right here that I'm inking. And they are at war with this sort of, um, what are these guys? They're kind of like tech, they're like technological zombies, I guess, which is, I guess what, what we all are now. But, uh, <laughs> um, so they're techno zombies and the, the way that I, the, I don't know if you guys have seen that movie laser blast, but laser blast just basically haunted me from the moment I saw it when I was six years old. And it's about this kid who, um, basically finds some alien technology shit. And one of the things that, <laughs> that he found was a arm blaster. Have you seen this movie? No, I gotta watch it. Dude, <laughs> he finds his arm blaster. It's this little redneck kid in the out in the country and he finds this arm blaster and he finds this necklace and it basically turns him into this weird zombie and he has but he has an arm blaster on it and he goes hey can, we oh, get, can you get clone oh, off oh, that oh, thing clone, clone. clone get off my beautiful splash page we have a we have an evil cat on the loose oh. it's alright if we move this and <laughs> here we put that there that'll be alright then right. clone can hang out on top yeah of she that. can go up there she's a fucking nightmare um Anyway, but uh, the movie was cool, and it has some really cool stop motion in it too. So, but um, so let's see, how do I make this look good? By the way, that's the key: trying to make it look. Good. <laughs> it's so funny because I'm not really a comic book artist that much. Like I'm trying to get better at it, but you know, when you see, you know actual super talented comic book artist you see that they're just so much more comfortable um i don't know with shading and cross hatching and all this stuff and and for me i'm a little bit still i don't know kind of get used to it. it 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 forces you to let go you just have to just be like all right i'm gonna let it go Was that Todd McFarlane? He says, just fill in a bunch of black everywhere. Like when in doubt, just fill it in. Is she trying to get up there? Yeah, she, she wants to destroy everything I love. <laughs> she comes so the person that did the breakdowns for this for me is an incredible filipino artist named erwin papa he's just so fucking cool and the reason i i like to bring up the fact that he's filipino is because um essentially to me my absolute favorite artists have just always been either from new york or the philippines um and so I just consider to be him to be in that long, like long line of masters um, from the Philippines. Like Louis Cordero is a, a weirdo painter guy. I love. Then there's then Gonzalo Mayo. I, I I don't know if Gonzalo Mayo was Spanish, but then you know Esteban Morodo, Nesta Redondo, Ernie Chan. Who, his, his real name was Ernie Chua, but he changed it to Chan, I think, because um, to make it easier for American people <laughs> to say it or something. Imagine going to a country and being like, I have to change my name because the people here are too stupid. 
to, uh, <laughs> or too racist. <laughs> But, you know, this is, everything I do is a little bit like a, a bootleg um, Bernie Wrightson situation, so. He, he's not Filipino. He's like, I think he's from Baltimore. <laughs> but I met him one time in, in, um, in Austin, Texas, the Mondo Con. He was really, really sweet. I wonder if people are gonna see how I how I ink and stuff and just be like, does this guy know what he's doing even? Kind of letting it just happen, I guess. I didn't really sleep that good last night, so I'm like wondering if I'm if I was like wondering if I was gonna be able to um, do complete sentences and stuff. So the thing you can kind of learn with these long liners is there's ways of kind of turning them into this. They kind of like can fill a lot of space if you want them to. Like a thick line. Yeah. Turn them into a thick. Like twisting it or something. Yeah. Go like this. <laughs> yeah. It's like if you're too lazy to get a different brush, you just figure it out. <laughs> Literally too lazy to reach over and Wait, grab it. Did you already say what kind of brush that is? I did. It's an Isabi liner. Which I will say is not doesn't have the all around maybe the the same um the same skills as uh, say like a, a Raphael Kolinsky 8404 or 8405, but it does ha have the ability to make these like just absolutely crazy small skinny lines, which is what I like. So this way I can kind of show the lips a little bit. It's coming along. It's all right. Oh, yeah, here's my other one. <laughs> That's the same brand and same brand, same size. I feel like this one might be a little more beat up than that one. I should probably use that one, but oh, you can't really see it now when I do it like that here. How about if I? Yeah, this is better. Trying to make sure that everybody can see it is the hard part. <laughs> yeah, I should be checking on that too. Producer Mark. What if nobody could see anything I have? <laughs> there might be some parts where nobody can see anything. Yeah. So I think we should do a third camera, maybe. Yeah, oh, hell yeah. But this will be good.
Yeah, it's starting to look a little better. These are like little Yeti freaks, these dudes. Yeti from the, from like, um, like in the cold there. Mm-hmm. Yetis. The abominable Yetis. Yeah. Do some work on this too. Oh, yeah, see? I think this brush is... Oh, wait. There's something... I can't tell which of these pages that the clone has climbed on. There's a little cat claws in them and shit. People are going to be asking for discounts on original art when they see, like, I think your cat destroyed this one, though. <laughs> so I don't even know when we started. So I don't know when it'll be about an hour or so. We got 26 minutes in right now. Oh, 26 minutes in? That's not bad. But most of that was just ranting in the dark, huh? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm not doing this just like... I'm not hitting I'm not hitting these angles too good. Let's see. I watched one time I watched a a Jim Lee. It's like one of the greatest comic book artists of all time doing one of these and it was like everything was just second nature to him. It was kind of nuts just to watch this guy do an insanely complex illustration of Batman in like an hour and a half, two hours. I, cu I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, God. I was reminded of my own shortcomings immediately. Yeah, once I see it, once I'm getting more like comfortable with it and stuff, I can do a more cooler. Let me move this over here so I don't spill it. I can just see a spill coming on. So this, these characters have this big, they have a big uh, tooth. Is it a tooth or a fang? It's like a fang, I guess. Yeah, it's like kind of a... Yeah, I guess it's more of a fang. Or is it more of a tonsil? <laughs> I think tonsil, I don't know if tonsils are teeth, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they might they might not be that. Let me see. I'm trying to get this angle right here. Yeah, I think ton I don't know if tons I think tonsils um they they uh they hang in your back ear. What are what are tonsils for? Yeah. Tonsillitis. They're so you can get tonsillitis. Yeah. 
So these characters have these like little rock horns kind of going down their back to their tail. Tell you what, streaming is going to keep me honest about the amount of work I do, though. If I'm like, <laughs> if I have to stream, if I'm if, if I'm streaming like a lot of this illustration and shit, yeah, I'll be getting a lot done. <laughs> Maybe I could just use this as an excuse to be busy, stay busy. Yeah. I got to stream. I can't. I can't go to dinner with anybody. I have to stream. <laughs> I gotta do my little stream on, man. Yeah, I feel like this brush is a little bit busted. I'll have to get a better one. It's kind of come along, I guess, a little bit. I guess once, uh, Once COVID hit, I had to like, <laughs> I had to like really lean into the strengths I had, I guess. No more just acting crazy. I had to like make art. <laughs> Do you ever, um, if you don't get good sleep, do, do your eyeballs like feel like they get all dry? Yeah, I thought I had some shit in my eye the other day, but I think it was just that I didn't sleep well enough. <laughs> Does that happen to you? I guess that's kind of like what's going on with me right now. The main thing is don't touch your eye that happens because then you'll actually put something in your eye <laughs> I hope not germs from your phone huh? well you can like scratch it pink eye from your phone yeah dude those scriptures are still fresh still tasty <laughs> we'll do some beer reviews too dude yeah. <laughs> so become like a beer review channel. How's your Captain Save a Hop doing? You need a, you need a crew. Good. No. Oh yeah, yeah. Wait, let me see. <laughs> My neighbor that lives across the street uh, makes this beer, Full Circle Beer Brewing. Mark. Oh, his name's also Mark. Yeah, his name's Mark. Oh. Alright, here's the other one. Dude, his clone behind me? Yeah, clone's right there. Cryptid. Oh, Ghost Town. Ghost Town Brewing. I love Ghost Town. Yeah, we got these last week. Salud. Cheers. Cheers, man. Cheers to you, everybody out there. <laughs> oh, this tastes delicious. Yeah, that's bomb, huh? Um, I feel like Ghost Town just is the best they know what they're doing yeah they're killing it oh. but yeah i mean i could imagine just how much nicer it would be for me to just sit and answer questions instead of just like painting like this it's so much easier for me <laughs> um 
Let me see. I have. Oh, here it is. Okay. So here's the SB one. I think this one's in better shape. Honestly. So wait, is this thinner or it's the same one? It's right? the same. The same, just in better shape. It's a better shape. Sorry about burping, everybody. I hope you didn't hear it out there. Oh, jeez. Sorry about burping on all my homies. Dude, it was crazy today hanging out with um with Phil. He's like uh he's so much he's really, really like a lot more um jovial than when I was working with him on Mad God. So I would I would go volunteer sometimes on Mad God. And he just seemed like so overwhelmed with it. I think maybe he just wanted it to be over or something. He seemed like stressed. So I would just try to like help stay out of the way. But I got some like incredible photos of him uh, working on it with the light coming up on him and stuff. Like felt like I captured this genius at work. I should try to find those photos. They're incredible. I'm not even a good photographer. It was just the lighting from the scenes he was doing. I got to figure out how to make these eyeballs cool. Here we go. Let me do them like this. Because I'm going to have to... Whoever's unlucky enough to have to color this is going to have to make these things look moist as hell. Who are you thinking is going to be doing these? Maybe Jeremy Cox. You know what? You know what's cool, man, is that like these dudes like working with me, Jeremy Cox and Alan Pasalacqua, and they're like because I'm not DC Comics, I'm just like the opposite of DC Comics, <laughs> the opposite of Marvel. <laughs> I'm the opposite of every comic company. I'm like probably the least professional, but I'm just trying to get cool stuff done. But uh, they they're just like I don't know. Like I think they just like that. You know, we can get on the phone and talk and just talk about art and, and like what we like about colors and how we like colors being used. And I don't know. I talked to Jeremy today. He's coloring the uh, um, Seven Geishas adaptation, the Clark Ashton Smith adaptation I've been working on. <laughs> And he's doing an insane job. It looks crazy. I posted a page on my Instagram. The dude rules straight up. Um, and then Alan is fucking rules too. And he's just like, like, I don't know. It, there's just something, I mean, like, maybe I'm just still like a total nerd, you know. But I saw that he... Did a bunch of stuff for DC on this swamp thing, and I was like, I, "I want, I want this guy to work on my shit." So it's like these guys that work on these legendary things, you know. And I'm like, "Yeah, he worked on my comic too," you know. I'll never get tired of finding new ways of feeling excited about shit like that. It's just the best. But um, yeah. Also, like. Thank God I met Phil after I stopped getting starstruck by people. <laughs> because I think I'd be like, boo, 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 boo. You're the king. You're the best. But now I can just sort of like hang out with him and joke and shit. And it, you know, because it's like people are just regular people. They don't want to feel uncomfortable. And, you know, they don't, people just want to feel like, you know, they're just, they're just people. I mean, I don't know. I, I, that's, I guess I'm just, maybe I'm projecting that. I don't know, but you know, there are people that thrive on, on the, uh, I guess on the notoriety. I don't know. Notoriety. The only, the only thing that's good about notoriety is that I might get you another job. Feel me? Or a taco. Might get you a free taco, dude. 
I got some free tacos before. I was like, that was the cool. I was like, this is what it's all about. You're like, dude, let me buy you a taco. I was like, all right, <laughs> all right, dude, let me buy you a beer. I'm like, all right, let's do it. Let's go. Did you notice we got that free beer tonight? That was tight. Yeah, do a little work, a little magic. <laughs> work a little magic, get a little free beer. I was like, ma'am, we're so thirsty. I said, like, you know who I am? I'm in Blink 182. <laughs> Could I please have a free beer? I'm the one who likes aliens. I'm the alien one. But, you know, having Cody Goodfellow help me with the scripts on these two is awesome. You know, I, I'm, I'm learning how to do scripts. It's, it's hard. Um, doing comic, like telling stories in sequential ways is uh, kind of hard. Um, but you can, you know, if you just like look at a comic, you go, all right, I think I could do this, but there's it's it's a it's kind of weird because it's making comics is sort of the most unlimited art form so it's like you can have the greatest some of the greatest stories ever told like the most interesting way and then you can have like <laughs> the worst story <laughs> like the lamest stories ever told and um You know, you you get you get you can you know it's a mixed bag is what I'll say. <laughs> you never know, but I feel like this guy's starting to come along. So let me let me explain. Let let me let me say this though. Okay, first of all, this uh, I I need to fix this because this like little horn thing looks like it's going way off, dude. Like in the wrong direction. It's like it's looking weird, but um. Shit. <laughs> Here, let me do it like this. Maybe this will help. Yeah, that can that kind of like kind of helped. Also, since it's a magical world that is not like a human, like who's to say that horns don't grow like all sideways and shit? All right, that's a little better. Um, what what, what was I talking about, man? Something about scripts. They're hard to do. Um. You know, you look at an Alan Moore script or a Grant Morse, Grant Morrison script. Every time I think about Grant Morrison, I think about the time that I met him and I totally like a stupid American accidentally confused Edinburgh with Ireland and he's from Scotland. So I was like, oh, God, great. Another like geographically challenged American says so something stupid. So. But he was sweet to me, and I'm sure he doesn't remember, but boy, I was embarrassed. Try to impress, like, a really smart, interesting person, but, and, and you're just like, say something dumb. <laughs> That's the story of my life, man. I remember only one time I met, maybe I could try to get Mike Patton. Maybe I could interview him. I think I have access to him, but I remember when I met him, <laughs> we got... I was like, I was like, oh, cool. Well, I started having a conversation with him. First time I met him. Second time we got super, super drunk on on tequila, <laughs> with him and uh, uh, Tim Moss, the, the their manager, and Braun from Mastodon. And me and Braun were there. Is like, we were just like kind of fanning out. We're like, Dude, it's Mike Patton. <laughs> oh my God, he's buying us tequila. This is awesome. <laughs> um, but first time I met Mike Patton. We started talking about basketball for some reason. I was like, oh, yeah, my favorite guy, that's Allen Iverson. That was my number one dude. Like, I liked him. And he's like, Allen Iverson, he blew all his money. He's, he, he's, not, he, he, he's not smart. He, he messed up. He, he, like, blew all of his cash, you know. And I was like, I don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's a weird reason to not like somebody. But, you know. 
Um, but I think he was just saying financially he was irresponsible. And I think what I was saying was, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. But yeah, the second time we got we hung out with with Mike Patton. I, now now that I'm thinking about it, man, it would be kind of a big get if we could get him on here, huh? Yeah. Just ask him about stuff. Yeah. Be like, remember when we got into that argument? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's nothing better than having awkward uh, um, experiences with famous people. Have you ever had any awkward experiences with famous people? <laughs> yeah you have yeah Kirk Hammett <laughs> what happened I, I like I was at that after party okay you were at an after party at a bar Some they okay. like rented out some bar Metallica or Kirk? Kirk Metallica okay rented out a bar across the street from Slim's I think it was okay and we we're I was like damn it's all Metallica here and I asked my friend who had brought us there if it was okay to say hi to Kirk. And mm -hmm. he was like, yeah, we're all just hanging out here. It doesn't matter. Do oh, I already love how this is going. So I just went up and I was like, hi, Mark. Like, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, I'm from Peru and like whatever. And he was like, Peru? He was like, you guys have to free Lori Berenson. <laughs> oh my you like, got you guys have to free Lori Berenson. You're yeah, like, oh yeah, I'll like, get oh, right on Lori, that. You mean Lori Berenson? Like she's like from Shining Path, the terrorist organization? And he was like, terrorist organization? You must be one of those fascists. <sighs> Peruvian fascists. I was like, Peruvian fat that's Oh not... oh my god, he said that? Yeah. He, oh, like, because... he said that and turned away. It was like <gasps> He was, like, I'm not, he was like, I'm not talking to you, fascist. Oh, my God. Yeah, I was like... <laughs> and you're all confused? Yeah, you're all, like, oh, oh, sorry, yeah. Kirk Hammett. <laughs> yeah. You know what's interesting? It, it, I will say this. It's interesting that he knew what that was. It's probably because of the Rage of the Against the Machine guy. He wears Shining Path stuff at their shows. Okay, so wait, so 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 Zach De La Rocha was like, "Let's Shining Path is good." I think so. Like that would make sense. Uh, how else would Kirk know about it? Wait. Um, so w w what was the deal? Hmm? But it, it it is a terrorist organization, or it was like socialist or some rat or the communist or something. I think at one point it was a political party. Then, I mean, while I was growing up, it was just all like blackouts and car bombs and shit like that. They would do car bombs at the at the um, electricity power. So we'd have blackouts. They would go on for like a week and shit like that. And you were like, but I mean, I was a little kid. So, I don't know. I was like, oh, I can't play Nintendo for a week because they. <laughs> <laughs> don't you? Don't you wish? Don't you wish that you could have gone back in that situation with Kirk Hammett and been like, oh yeah, dude, they are fuck, dude. We should free them. Except I will say this, ah, <laughs> uh, dude, because of them, I couldn't play Nintendo for a fucking week, dude. <laughs> fuck that, dude. <laughs> That would have been funny. Right. You're like, you think I'm a fascist? They stopped me from playing Nintendo, dude. <laughs> okay. But she's free now. She's back in uh, back in Cambridge or Boston or wherever. Oh, okay. She got out. Mm -hmm. Is she from America? Yeah, she's an MIT graduate. She was do doing post-grad work in Peru. You must be one of those fascists. <laughs> Damn, dude. You're like, you think I'm a fascist? 
Well, you can't make me unslow dance with my girlfriend in the eighth grade to the Black <laughs> Album, brother. <laughs> You're like, guess my death, guess my lifestyle determines my death style, brother. <laughs> You can't unmake that song with Ja Rule. Dude, we got kicked out because our friend got in a fight. At that show? Yeah, that show. And what it the was, fuck's wrong with you? It, it was like they were playing Orion, too. It's just like they never play that shit anymore. Like, Wait, wait, wait. So, wait. They played a, They played the songs there? What do you mean? They played the songs. It was at Shark Stadium. The after party was after Shark Stadium. Okay, but they so they played the songs at Shark Stadium. Yeah. Okay. Now I guess I'm gonna. Dude, that's looking sick. Man. I mean, this is okay. So so essentially, but I'm gonna say this is what I'm gonna say to everybody. I'm gonna go back, and maybe I could just do it now. Actually, I'm gonna try to. Now, I'm not super good at this, and I apologize, everybody, but I do have these um, quill pens, so I'm going to attempt to show you that I go back in. I'm learning a lot. I'm learning as you learn, okay, friends? Um, let's see. Here's a quill pen, so... So the cool thing with the quill pen is you can kind of, you can kind of create even more textures. Um, let's see, this is this is even thinner lines, right? Or like, yeah, but they're hard. It's harder to control. So you're hitting it like sideways kind of. Right? Yeah. Let's see. Do you ever do the shit where you twist it? Well, I don't know if these are the twisting ones. But, you know, the, the see, but this, maybe what I could do is. Yeah, this is. This will be good. I can. My buddy John Wayshack is way better at this shit than me. That's for sure. Also, I just want everybody to know that. I really, I really enjoy, like when I, when I, when I do know what I'm doing, I, I, I try to just share the information. When I don't know what I'm doing, I like to say that I don't know what I'm doing because it kind of, um, it kind of allows me to feel more free to just not to mess up and not know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm a little bit lazy because like, you know, really, really good illustrators like, um, let's say, uh, Aaron Horky or something like that, you know, um, uh, William Stout or Mike Sutfin or, uh, uh, Heathen Legs. What's that guy's name? Brandon Holt. You'll see that like, they have very specific, see that, like, that doesn't look that bad. That's it. It looks all right. Let's see if I don't mess this one up. But um, but those guys all have like carefully understood, you know, very very um developed senses of like you know how, what what should go where how and what you know and why and like and I will say this in doing everything that I do like movies and animations and writing and concepts and painting and sculpting uh it has been very very fun for me 
But I will say that I have made it harder on myself to become a master of any one thing. You know what I'm saying? Like if I, if I, if all I did all the time was just drawing, I'd probably be good, like real good, like those dudes, you know, but I don't cause I get bored sitting around alone all day. Fucking sucks, dude. That's why I'm here now rec <laughs> recording this because we're forming a family guys. We're forming a sick family. She already messed up these little crunchies right there. <laughs> but nobody will know. That's the thing. Um, by the way, everybody out there, go easy on yourself. Because you think you're messing up, but nobody knows except you. It's like when you're in a band and you mess up the chords that you're playing. You don't act like you messed up. You act like you didn't mess up. You just go, oh, I'm just going to play. I'm playing, you know? And then when you're at home later... You can just be like, fuck, I fucked up those that riff. Do you know what I'm talking about, Mark? Um, you don't really mess up, so never mind. No, I always mess up. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, I've do. never seen you made a mistake on a bass. No, I, but the thing is I land on the wrong note, and then I, I do I see. A, I do a... You do a fucking... I just slide, <laughs> slide into the note. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah, but see, that's a professional... Slide. Only a professional slides right in there, slides into home base. On <laughs> <laughs> when I'm hitting that open E, brother. Yeah, slide from an open E to the 12th fret. <laughs> <laughs> you just sliding up and down the fretboard. Yeah, it sounds sick. See, all right, that doesn't look too bad. So, um, and then, you know, give the lips some texture. Yeah, I went to a Peruvian wedding and they uh, they got like a salsa band to play. The bass player was doing that the whole time. Slide. Yeah, it was sick. I was like, dude, that's so yeah, sick. Yeah, this full sliding, brother. And then I uh, and then I saw this band Nine Shocks Terror at Burnt Ramen, and uh -huh. I saw him doing exactly the same thing. He's just like sliding all over the place. Like, dude, you don't even need to know the song. As long as you just fucking slide and sometimes land on the right note, it's like you're just playing bass. This fool was slip sliding around. <laughs> this fool was sliding around like Kermit Neville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about? No, I don't That's a Longmont. Oh, I want to get long. Can we interview Longmont? Yeah, we're gonna get his phone number. Dude, I want to give my mom give my mom's phone number to him, because <laughs> <laughs> she would freak out. She'd be like, "What? Who the fuck is this?" Is uh, is your mom gonna do his taxes? No, I hope not, dude. She's oh, gonna do mine. Shit. I'm going to jail. How funny would that be if my mom was like? Just tired of doing my taxes, and she just like made it so I went to jail. For <laughs> <laughs> I hope she does that, man. I'll fit in to go to jail and drink Pruno, homie. Um, we're at fifty nine minutes right now. Okay, well, here you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of this um, little fun stuff here. Uh, so this, this T-Rex design that I did has these tentacles on its neck and I'll say this about quill pens. If you're, if you get good at them, you're basically going to be the coolest freaking artist there is. Um, I'm not yet. I'm still working on it. Um, but it's, it's cool because you have more control over the line weight than you do with like say a micron or something which i'll show you guys how i use these microns and shit too so but uh add a couple of these 
Do you ever combine Micron with uh, with Quill? And oh yeah, yeah. I go back. Yeah, because there's some Microns that I'm like, I don't know. Like there's like you can do things to fray the edges of them and uh, just kind of make them have their own weird little um, I don't know like effects that they have. Mm -hmm. um, but like, let's see here. I'll let me see if I could show. So here's an example of the line weight changing. So. So we want this to be like kind of skinny. So see that? Rounding it up like that. Sick. So using the thick part of the. Well, what you do is you press down more. Oh, pressing down harder. So you press down. Um, here, let me see if I can. Let me see. Okay, there's this. But yeah, you you press down more when you want it to. You see? So it's, you know, it's um Yeah, you know what I can do? I could do it over here. Let's see. So I don't know. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm trying to figure out a way of like exhibiting this for you in, a, in an easier way. But, but you know, it's so. Anyways, you can get better and better at that. Um, let me try to do some of these here. Like, so the uh, the nature aliens here. On this side, they have these uh, centipede type creatures. I think I stole this design from a, an alien movie, a movie about I don't know, centipede fucking. <laughs> I don't know, some centipede shit. Um, but I was like, oh, I really like it because I think it was sort of a popular. Japanese monster film. Um, yeah, actually, here. Here. I'll do it here. I can I can show you. Um, hold on. Okay. See, if you get really good, you start doing shit like this. See how it took me like five minutes though to get warmed up to that point? <laughs> it's hard. And then you kind of don't want the line weight to be super different from this side. So, you know, it kind of depends. Um, right now what I'll do is put this over here, wash out this quill, <laughs> and then I'm gonna do some, uh, I'm gonna do some fun horror, some EC style shit. Um, so, oh shit, there we go. Oh, okay, that's fine. That <laughs> page fell on the ground. Um, like, we're at one hour, three minutes. Okay. Well, I'm going to go for about 20, 20 minutes or so because um, I want to I wanna give people something cool to watch, but also I want to. Uh, I know that I talked for like the first, what was that? What was that, 15 minutes or something? I don't know. You don't know? All right. Okay, guys. So I'm going to go. So in this panel, there is a foot. Okay. <laughs> it's walking in the swamp here. Uh, you can kind of see what's going on. But anyways, all the tendons are exposed. Not unlike the hand here. You see? And... Yeah, I don't know if you could see that well. But yeah, you see how it's knocking on the door? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do some inking on this and show you how I kind of apply these like larger black chunks. And then I, I feather around them. 
And this is this is how I do this kind of shit. Um, this is a sort of bastardized, I don't know, Graham Ingalls meets Bernie Wrightson, um, Mike Plug, uh, sort of a ripoff. But as you can see, larger chunk uh, type masses they look like holes and there's something creepy <laughs> about these holes here um uh i don't know what what's that called when people are afraid of holes and things on um do you know what that's called mark holophobia yes holophobia no it's um tryptophobia actually um, but, uh, but yeah, so it's kind of fun because you can do these, these sort of like implied holes of decrepit rot. And then you can show, um, you know, little chunks of stuff together, sinew, ancient rotten sinew from the bottom of the swamp where, all the secrets go to die with the, the dead men who have broken the law, <laughs> the law <laughs> of the mafia. Uh, but anyway, so the cool thing is, is that a lot of it is sort of like implying, you know, what are we like? Like, I, I'll, I'll be honest, this is, you know, this is not a anatomically correct situation here all right and you don't need to because the implication is that it's just a rotten foot from hell um and then there's like roots growing in it um here's a root you know the roots roots in hell what is that that's the marijuana weed with roots in hell reefer madness but anyway, um, so let's get this root popping off, baby. And then here's sort of the the ball, the ball of the foot. And I am extraordinarily um, more excited about doing art like this, where I can kind of just, you know, I can flip around. I can go, you know, here, you know, if I get bored, because I'm kind of a, you know, neurotic freak. So if I get tired of drawing this and like you know all of a sudden my attention is sort of you know waning on it i'll go over here to some leaves and then uh try to give them a, the the jungle swamp technique here um the key is you know and i'm not that perfect at this but the key is to sort of let the brush the way that the brush works kind of decide the contour of stuff um and then that's where you get the mastery of the actual brush so like if you go look at you know uh, al williamson or wally wood or say uh but i would say al williamson specifically um and uh, Frazetta, Frank Frazetta, and the way that their brushwork goes in their comics, it's it's so just an expressive line of something. You know, they don't worry about it too much, like the, all the super details and stuff. It's really like the impression that is there. And like the natural, you know, the natural sort of understanding of what what makes something look balanced and good and natural is has nothing to do with reality. Um, you know, like if you look at Bernie Wrightson's illustrations where um, his, his characters, the way they move, all those crazy Ichabod Crane looking ass 
characters. Um, they they are contorted in impossibly unnatural positions, but it all looks natural. It all looks right. It looks balanced. It looks like it's supposed to be. Um, it looks like he knows what he's doing, you know, and that's about understanding the form. And that's under, that's about understanding, like maybe even just movement. Cause if you look like, I mean, he can draw a skinny person real, real, you know, incredible. It's immaculate. And then he'll, he'll draw like a buff person. And you realize this guy just has a, a mastery of the form and the ability to understand where shadows go, where um, shadows wouldn't go. I mean, you know, Jack, Jack Kirby has a, you know, il- extravagant, extravagant kind of anatomy that he puts in. I don't doubt it. I don't care. I love it. Give me that stuff. And I, I even think that Todd McFarlane doesn't have like a real strong understanding of anatomy, to be honest. Like if you've ever seen Todd McFarlane draw like a buff person, a buff character, it's just sort of like innocuous, weird lumps, lumps on lumps, you know, and it looks cool though. So, you know, you can't really, I don't know. I guess the idea is just make it look cool. <laughs> I don't know because Jack Kirby does, you know, his, he, he knew what anatomy was in the thirties and the forties when he was, you know, doing whatever, you know, old timey, all American blue, blue beetle comics or whatever. But over time, he just sort of created like a shorthand for what he thought was cool in the moment. And it's really interesting and strange. And, uh, you know, of course, he can do no wrong in my eyes. I, I love it all. It's I adore him more than anything. So, you know, give, give me that weird anatomy all day long over like, you know, some boring ass artist that, you know, they spent all their time trying to do the right thing, you know. It's, but yeah, you can see that it's, oh wait, it's sort of starting to come, become like a foot. Here's the toe. He's got a claw. Oh yeah, it went from being like a swamp thing, like a tree trunk or something, to now it's being coming a foot, right? Yeah, and then also maybe to make it look more like there's a fibia and a tibia, I will darken up. I will darken up the middle and try to create a situation that looks more. I don't know. That didn't really work. So whatever, <laughs> we'll figure this out. But, um, you know, the idea is that it's just like a rancid corpse that has been festering at the bottom of this swamp. <laughs> you can't go wrong with festering corpses. But yeah, it's look, I mean, this looks good. It looks gross. You know, it looks like a fucking gross foot. So, you know, mission accomplished, I guess. But, um, Kelly Jones is another uh, illustrator that I just adore um, his ability to make things look spooky with dark shadows but so these this is like swamp water splashing One day we're going to be able to straighten all that stuff out with Kirk Hammett, dude. Don't worry. <laughs> we're going to straighten it out, dude. So yeah, here we go. I've got the toe it's popping out. And as you can see, it's a disgusting toe. But it looks like an actual foot. Going getting gross as hell. 
right? I mean, kind of does. <laughs> whatever I can't do, whatever I can't make look right, the colorist, he'll, he'll figure it out. I was gonna make that water gross looking and make this leg look disgusting, buddy. But who was the character? Who was the artist that did the front that um that EC comic? It was like a, a, a disgusting zombie in the in the swamp holding a guy. Is it Johnny Craig? Might have been Johnny Craig, Al Feldstein, one of those cats. You know we should interview, man? It's my, my high school art teacher. That's going to be pretty cool. Huh? He's weird as hell. He'll probably just complain about me. He'll be like, this guy he wasted paper. He's wasting paper in high school. Man. <laughs> He's going to have to drive down from Sacramento. No, we'll, we'll go up and see him, man. We'll go up to his house. What do you think? Okay. He's too old. He's like 70. do a little bit of this try to make a little bit of this swamp let's see so making like the making shadows in the water it's not the easiest to do and i'll say this um when going in and doing darks a lot of blacks and stuff you go back with white so the white that i use is bleed proof white dr martin's it's really really high opacity high opaque stuff um really really incredible way better than any any white paint you know better um, than a whiteout better than whiteout dude for sure um So just like that and then you know go back in and hit it you want it to look like a a spooky swamp spooky swamps are they're all the rage these days here yeah. oh wait what's this Looks like a piece of something fell on it's a my dookie. A doo. It's a swamp dookie. That's a swamp duke. <laughs> but as you can see, the swamp is sort of coming together. Um let's see. Okay, we're closing up on one hour and 19 minutes and 30. Do you want to just do an hour and a half? My back is starting to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to do that. Sit, sit in that chair. Grab that chair, homie. Yeah, I should do that. Dude, you don't have to stand up and record this. No, it's sick having a two angle though. Yeah, well there's two angles on here. No, oh, that's one angle, dude. But you don't have to come on man, this ain't Joe Rogan podcast. We <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, it's like, it's like kind of funny too, because uh, I'm, I'm realizing like how much I can get done just in <laughs> like an hour. And I'm like, man, I should, uh, I should probably have more pages done by now. I like to sit, I like to look at my phone and listen to podcasts and change the channel and do all that stuff. But we can, we can stop it at, uh, we can stop it like, do you, do you want to do you, you you want to just take that turn that off what that camera you can you don't have to keep that going bud <laughs> for the last words i feel like you should you think so for the last words like just talking to this thing okay right. that's fine whatever okay but yeah kelly jones if you guys are interested in horror illustrators, um, strongly, strongly recommend Kelly Jones, uh, Bernie Wrightson, Graham Ingalls, Wally Wood does a lot of good stuff. Um, he did a lot of science fiction, that type of shit. Um, Richard Corbin, really good. Um, Let's see who else is I the Gurch. <laughs> There's an artist called the Gurch. There's this guy named Putrid Art um on uh, Instagram, something putrid, putrid. Anyways, he, he's really got a super brutal underground style of uh like gnarly, you know, but it's that sort of um what do they call that? grindhouse shit i'm too sensitive though i can't draw like i don't want to draw like women getting stabbed by a demon or whatever a, a ripper like some ripper or whatever <laughs> um what's his last name it's matt matt corn corn um anyways putrid art <laughs> <laughs> that's what's so funny about instagram is i can't remember anybody's names because it's always like pizza mountain <laughs> R ripper man rip or like like wolf like like weed wolf two 420 or something you know? <laughs> it's like man what's your fucking name <laughs> what's your name rob robert thomas they're like fucking keep you know gilbert keenan <laughs> Solomon Rutherford. <laughs> I'm Pizza Wolf 666. But then again, people probably think I made up the name Skinner, so whatever. Which I did. I didn't make that up. You think I would just be like, yeah, my name's going to be Skinner. That's tight. <laughs> no. I'd be like Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> I got a cool name. Here, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work on this one now. Here, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work on something over here. This looks fun. I'm gonna keep it rotten, rotten over here. Yeah, here we go. This hand here is kind. Of, oh, let's do this in tongs. Holding this rotten hand with some tongs here. Thomas Rutherford, a.k.a. Ass Mountain 76380. Ass Mountain. Pentagram Wookie. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that, dude? <laughs> How'd you come up with that name? I think Sarah made it up for me. Oh, that's cool. It was, uh, it was for dating. Oh, you were dating? Because she wanted me to start dating people because we were dating, but then we broke up. And she was like, she put me in this app called OkCupid. Okay oh, she put you in there. 
Yeah. What does that mean when a girl is like tries to convince you to date other people? <laughs> That's that means she's weird. bonding some other dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I guess that's what that means. You you young kids these days, you always you guys are doing weird shit, man. That's cool. that's cool, and I like it. I say go for it. I say go for it, Pentagram Wookie. Pentagram was the my World of Warcraft character back then. Dude, you had a you played World of Warcraft? Yeah, I was addicted. I'm learning new stuff about you, brother. You were addicted, huh? Yeah, Pentagram was the my rogue. It was a rogue. Oh, you were a rogue? Yeah, melee. A melee rogue? Yeah. Rogues are always melee. I don't know what that means. Uh, melee means like a little fight. Well, melee. It's either melee or what's the other one? Like when it's like wizards that they shoot shit, you know? Mages. Like mages. What do you mean? Like distance. I already forgot what it was. But it, there's a word for it. For distance fighting? Yeah, when they throw shit, you know? Or like, like hunters, they have like guns. Like range, I guess range versus melee. Maybe that's range. Cool. Yeah, range. Huh. Melee is like swords. Yes. Nunchucks. Knives. Yeah. Yeah, nunchucks. That's all melee. But if somebody's like throwing a rock, or like a, casting a spell. Or you ever had anybody throw a rock at you in World of Warcraft? I don't know if you could grab rocks and throw them. <laughs> I don't know. Can you just play like a really like unhappy, upset child that throws rocks at people? <laughs> it's like, what's your class? You're like insane child. <laughs> that would be an orphanage. Sick, that would be a sick game. Child fight. <laughs> I feel like we just came up with a cool game. Dude. Child fight. Like you have to like get your children. Like it's like to survive. You have to like find a lunchables and uh you have to like i don't know scavenge scavenge food it's like it's the end of the world and you're the last children on earth yeah hell yeah child fight <laughs> lunchables the greatest lunch food of all time did you have lunchables in peru no but I've had it here in the United States. I had it for when I was in the Academy of Art. When you had it, were you just like, what in the hell is this? When you came, the food in America must have been just brutal for you. Why? Because it's kind of terrible in a lot of ways. It's like, you're like, what's this? Like going from Peru, like delicious pupusas on the street. <laughs> to There's like... no pupusas. <laughs> You were going from delicious pupusas to fucking Lunchables in America? <laughs> no. My man over here getting jacked up on pupusas. No, dude, I was hooked on Gordo's day one. Gordo's tacos. Gordo's burritos. Still am, dude. Gordo's burrito. Where's Gordo's? Well, the first one I see that was the one on uh, Balboa. Okay. Well, I'm born 38th, or so, I think. Uh, in the, what is that? The Outer Richmond. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now I go to one up on college. That's the one you like. Yeah, I think it's better than the one on Telegraph. Gordo's old timey burritos. They got the good vegan stuff, huh? Uh, I don't think they have anything vegan there. Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's like, like the, it's, it's like every time. single thing is like. It's probably something meat spilled in it somehow. Probably. I wish there was a good like. I there is the vegan taqueria. I still need to try that. Dude, they don't. We don't have like good like mission burritos here in Oakland though. You know that? You don't like, like Gordo's? Is that here? 
Yeah. Where? On um, fucking college, dude. Oh, yeah. I, I like that place. Yeah. I was trying to, you know what? I tried to go there the other day. It was closed. Oh, shit. I was like, I was like, what the hell is this? Really? Yeah, I was like, what's going on? I wonder what it was. <laughs> what time did you go at? Lunchtime. <laughs> That's weird. I wonder if it. I had to eat a lunchable instead. <laughs> Like, what's all this? Well, I said, what's all this then? What's all this? And then I just sat down and had a Lunchable. It was delicious. No, I was eating, when I was there, I was, mm, like, when I first moved here, I was eating a lot of ramen with peanut butter. Yeah, it's vegan. Yeah, I remember, I remember eating that. It's ramen time, baby. The greatest time to be alive. Uh. <laughs> Keep that in the recording. <laughs> Put it, add echo to it. But, 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 but. Dan it, dan it, dan it, dan it, dan it, but, but. <laughs> All right, now. Dude, you know what? You, you ever heard that saying, though, that people say, let ugly people make music again? <laughs> you ever heard that one? <laughs> you ever heard that saying? No. It's They're a, like, let ugly people make music again. Is that a new saying or is that... It's a new on? one. <laughs> no, but I've heard that before. And then I was thinking about like, oh, who are ugly musicians? And I was thinking about Dave Mustaine. <laughs> dude's so ugly <laughs> but i was like it's not just that he's ugly but that he looks like he he looks like an amalgamation of every child that's like kicked a puppy or something he looks bad do he you think he got kicked out of metallica because he wasn't handsome enough yeah because the other guys were like supermodels <laughs> 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 the other dudes were so good looking that it was like okay you're out dude we need a zoolander up in here we need a Maroon 5. Yeah. I said, <laughs> we need a Maroon 5, dude. We need the guy that's more like... And then they got that bass player. What's his name? Yeah, yeah. Who was also a supermodel. Oh, is he one really? No. No. Well, they didn't get Robert Trujillo until later. Robert Trujillo is probably the least ugliest guy that's ever been in that band. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Kirk Hammett's not ugly. And I don't... I don't I don't know. They're all, they all seem. I don't know. They don't seem like. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I have good taste. Yeah. None of them are as good as looking as Ricky Rocket. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> um. All right. Yeah. Alright, it's one hour thirty-three. Do you think we should go two hours then? I mean we could, I guess. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. We don't have to. What do you think? Well, we could like even, you know, I could even do a um I could try to do a recording tomorrow too. Yeah. You know, just to something fun. But I wanna um I wanna even like, you know, just do a little blog post and stuff too. And I'm trying to see, is there anything here that I could do that would look that would look cool? Um here's the uh This is the rotten dude facing the bog witch here. Let's see. But I wanted to, um, I see, I want to, 
I wanted to give them like a, I wanted to have like some light. So. All right. Now. Also, anybody out there, you know, I'll be, you know, if you guys want to buy bottles from me or if you want to do something, if you want access to stuff, you know, you can, I'll give you a first crack at the, at all the stuff. All right. Um, you go to my website, you're going to get hooked up. You're going to get a sick, sick beanie like this. <laughs> look how it sits on my head. I look like a douchebag. They're pretty comfortable. I look like a d bag here over here. Look at this. Who wears their? Who wears a beanie like this? Hello. I'm trying to make you not think that I'm bald. Look at this. What about dudes that wear their shit like this? Like, what's the guy from uh like from this? Clerks? Uh, Jay, Jay wears, I like Jay. He's he cool. wears his beanie like that sometimes. Did you like that movie Clerks when it came out? Dude, I used to watch that shit like on repeat when I was in college. That and Strange Brew. We just had like those two VHS tapes in my dorm. Oh, you were in college? Where'd you go to college? Academy of Art College in San Francisco. Oh, that's did you tell I, me that already? That's where I, why I moved to the U.S. to go to college. So you were going to be an artist? Yeah. What kind? Digital. Dude, that's sick. You are a digital artist, huh? <laughs> How much money do you owe them? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> oh, my God. I love that answer. Yeah. Wait, so do they try to garnish your wages or what's up? Oh, is that why you're kind of like off the radar? <laughs> You're like off the radar. Yeah, I'm off the radar. You're man. off the radar? You're off the grid, bro. Yeah. <laughs> You're off the grid. Don't pay them, dude. Don't give them no fucking money. I think that place was a scam anyway. I heard it was a scam. Did you kind hear it was of, a scam? Depends who, if you're skilled. Oh, if you're skilled, it's a scam? Mm, I think if you're... No, I think if you're skilled, they'll get, hook you up a job. The Academy of Art. Wait, it, did it close down? Uh, I don't think so. Why? I think Donald Trump owns that uh, owns that college. No. Yeah, Trump College. Trump Art. I went to Trump Arts. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Trump Arts, dude, and I graduated. Top of me class, mate. <laughs> Top of me fucking class, mate. Now I'm, now I'm just stabbing people in the street. That's me art, mate. Now I'm just taking photo. Now I'm just selling dick pic NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell people to, I'm going to tell them how I feel about uh, NFTs. I'm going to give them, I'm going to send them that Brad Trammell. Um, I'm going to post the link to the Brad Trammell. What is that? Um, uh, <laughs> the Brad Trammell is an art critic, uh, interesting, interesting fellow and uh, super smart and academic dude, but like way, way critical of everything. And it's incredible. The dude is incredible. I strongly recommend Brad Trammell, uh, but I'll, I'll post a link, um, his video about NFTs and cryptocurrency and shit. He's a super fascinating person. And I think it's, you guys should check it out. You still have your crypto? Me? It's a scam, doggy. Getting a scam, homie. All your money went down. Did you lose money in this crypto fucking? I've lost like $3,000. <laughs> Since November. <laughs> Mark lost three grand. Should have sold it on November. <laughs> That's the problem, dude. November 1st or 2nd, I think, was the day to sell everything, pretty much. Except for, like, Apple and Tesla. Yeah, and, Tesla. And, like, Ford. Actually, Ford's doing great. Ford NFTs are killing it. 
Ford F one hundred and F T. Ford is just they really know what they're doing. E one fifty. Uh huh. The E one fifty. If you're gonna tour, E one fifty, dude. Oh, that's the van yeah, for that's touring. A, that's the van. Every every thrash band used to have the E one fifty, dude. Every thrash band, if you need a tour van, get the E one fifty Ford. Yeah, it was so thrash that there was even a thrash band called E one fifty. Oh really? Yeah, they were from like Spain or some shit. Everybody loved it, huh? Yeah, that was the one thrash band band. Now let me ask you: Is it because it didn't break down, or? It's because it's the one that you can build a loft. It's the smallest one that you can build a loft, and it still makes sense and fits. Like you can fit like a full stack and merch. Full stack. Full stack. I don't think Jack. you can fit a full stack. I think you can fit like a half stack. You if you build a bunk and then you still have enough room for merch, full drum set. You know, like you can't fit like a double key. You kick gotta and, have a um and like tons of merch. But you can do like you know, it's like Full stack, dude. It's like the smallest one that you can do without needing like um, the trailer, you know. If you don't have like too much gear, like if you have like a four ten and a half stack, too much gear, too and much like a gear. regular, you know, you know, like a regular four piece drum set and merch, you can fit that all in an E one fifty. How many farts can you keep in there? <laughs> Depends on your flushing system. Bro. Oh, dude. You gotta have the flushing system figured out. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. That's pretty weird, huh? Yeah. Kermit Neville on, on parole, on patrol. Because yeah. the windows are kind of tiny on those. So, as soon as somebody farts, you gotta have like a, to have like a code word so everybody knows to like open the, their window. Real quick to make sure all the fire shits out. Ass parole patrol. Yeah. Welcome to my E one fifty fart world experience. <laughs> you guys were in there just ripping ass on each other, huh? <laughs> no, we had a flushing system. In there? Yeah. What do you mean you had a flushing system? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you flush your own asses. We're, we're gonna have to interview Andre for this one. Oh no! Did you guys have a shit bucket? <laughs> you guys have a little shit bucket? <laughs> are you serious? No, you not guys a are insane. No, not a, shit a piss bucket. bucket. A piss bucket. That's fine. That's nothing, man. You gotta have a piss bottle, piss bucket, all that piss shit. Bottle. Yeah, piss bottle. Yeah, I got a pit, little piss bottle. I'm good. The Runamux had a little hole in there, man. Oh really? Yeah, they had like a. I don't know if they drilled it or if it just came like that, but it had like this pee hole in the back. That's what you gotta do, man. Dude, you want to get to the next town? It's yeah. a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll, buddy. Yeah, you gotta have a pee hole in your van. Yeah. Uh, only if you have dudes, though, huh? You want a girl? No girl wants to sit there while a bunch of fucking. Fucking neck beards with denim jackets looking at her trying to take a piss in the back of the E-150. <laughs> yeah. She's like, stop looking at me, Brett. I see you. You ever been in a band that had girls in it? Trying to, oh, like for a second only, yeah. Back when you were in that band with Courtney Love? <laughs> How sick would that be if you were in Hole, that band Hole? Right. I am the girl with the most cake. Remember when Kurt Cobain died and everybody's like, dude, Courtney did it. There's a documentary about how she did it. <laughs> I know. What do you think about that documentary? I think the part with Il Duce is pretty hilarious. That dude is fucking melted, man. Yeah. How did he die? He died soon after that. Doctor. Yeah, I know. Somebody pushed him in front of a fucking railroad truck. Railroad, railroad truck.
Got the tongs, baby. Okay, you guys. Here, I'm going to uh, switch this over. Lights? <laughs> yes, no. You, you can leave the lights on. But anyway. No, let's do lights. You want to do dark yeah. light? Okay, yeah. we're doing spooky lights. We're coming back. <laughs> Listen, everybody. I love you. Thank you for joining us. Is it Was it like an hour and a half? An hour and 45. Okay, it's an hour and 45. Um, I'm going to be doing this more. I'm going to be... This was just basically to try to get, you know, to give content to the eight people that have signed up. <laughs> but uh, I haven't really posted about it that much, and I'm going to. So, you know, hopefully we what we can do is get into a rhythm where... Um, a couple times a week, I'll be doing posts and answering questions. I think um, it's going to be easier and easier for me to to navigate and to to basically have guests and even um, actually ask questions to guests too. Um, I'll try to find out who the guest would be early on in the week, and then get you guys the um, who who the guest would be. And then that would give you time to figure out, you know, what exactly it was that um, you wanted to ask. Um, <laughs> I have some ideas of people. Uh, I have a lot of questions. Um, I'm just going to sometimes I'm just what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some hangouts uh, with other artists and talk. And I'm going to make I'm going to make it fun and funny. I was thinking. It might actually be kind of cool too to do a video midweek because um, I buy comics pretty much every week. Uh, do an examination of comics and things that I really like and just sort of, I don't know, just share the experience of, of the way that I kind of filter reality, the way that I, I see stuff. And um, I do think that the thing that I probably really do want want to stress is that um I, i'm very i'm transparent about you know my thoughts about art the art world um what it means to be a working artist how you can navigate better money for yourself hopefully how you can uh create like more of a sustained relation uh creative rhythm and relationship with yourself and Honestly, a lot of this has to do with um, creating, you know, a good uh, practice, you know. So you want to have like a good practice with yourself where, you know, maybe you're not a professional artist. Maybe you don't want to be that. That's totally fine. I don't care. Who cares? Nobody cares. It makes you, it makes you, nobody better or less than if you don't want to do it for a living. In fact, <clears throat> I find it to be an incredibly beautiful thing that people don't diminish their relationship with art by stressing about it. If it's too difficult to be an artist, a professional artist, which is extraordinarily difficult to get into after a while it might get a little easier. I don't know. Um, maybe you get a job working at a studio or something as an artist. There is no shame in that, but in order to, create and sustain autonomy and independence as a artist, as an illustrator, painter, designer, whatever. It is one of the most difficult things you could, you could probably endeavor upon as a, you know, self-employed person. So, um, it's stressful and I will definitely be talking about that stress. I will, I will actually share with you how I kind of began my journey and what happened and the world was a different place, much different. Uh, 2008 was when I quit my job and there was no Instagram. <laughs> there was no Twitter. There was Twitter, I think. Twitter, yeah, maybe. I don't know. But Facebook was just sort of fresh. You know, I mean, I remember MySpace and stuff, you know. So, um, but the only way that you could really be in a kind of a professional artist was if you could kind of. I don't know, get into an art magazine or something. So it was like, there was a lot of different gatekeepers at that time. And I have a lot of thoughts about that, a lot of things about the industries and stuff. So I'll talk about it. But um, 
if you are just trying to just be an artist and practice your craft and practice your skills and get better, I would love to be a part of uh, encouraging you to do that. There's zero, you know, zero reason that you need to do it for a living and that you can't just do it because you love to get better at it and it's fun and you want to draw a sick shark with a fucking monster on it right in its back. Or you want to know how to draw crystals or whatever. I don't know. But um, it's going to be, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm just, I mean, at some point I'm going to have to just stop talking about what it's going to be and then just sort of do it. But I just thought that I would just, I don't know, just kind of rant about it a little bit. And I feel like the more I rant about shit, the more things become clear to me. <laughs> But uh, this has just been a lot of fun doing this. I'm trying to figure out how to do uh, how I would go about doing like live painting, actually, um, with the way that the cameras would be set up where I would be airbrushing on stuff and then inking. So I think maybe in the next week or so um, we can do that, Mark. I think maybe we could do a... Yeah like a small painting. What I'll do is I'll pencil, I'll get like a small canvas set up and then I'll full pen process. just full process. Like I'll just show you, grab a canvas, illustrate on it. Um, sometimes I'll do a projection on those things and then just sort of pencil that, which helps me keep the pencil lead from smearing all over the, the damn thing. But, uh, and then airbrushing into it, letting it dry, inking, inking the whole thing making it happen you know and then just presenting the whole thing i think the full process would be good and uh because i think that if i do a couple of those uh a lot of people at home would actually be able to like kind of figure it out on their own you know what i mean mm -hmm. so anyway um this this should be going up soon i think and then uh and then we're gonna post that the 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 Patreon is, is alive and well. <laughs> and then uh, I will be interacting with you guys, writing little blogs and just kind of catching up with you and stuff like that. I'm trying to get, you know, my goal is to create this as a sustainable, fun, really fun thing to do for me and Mark. Um, and I think that uh, Mark's really good at doing this stuff. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. And that being said, uh, I hope you guys have a really great night. Thanks for joining me on this thing. And uh, I, I'm going to talk to you soon. All right. Okay. Peace out.